After a slow trickle of news stories last week, I plunged the old news pipe and, oh my gosh, look at all these headlines that just spilled out all over the floor. That's right, I'm your host Andrew, and we've got an extra large shot of Crypto Espresso, your not-so-teeny-tiny daily shot of caffeinated crypto headlines today on this beautiful autumnal Monday. First up, Bitcoin has suffered its lowest weekly close since December of 2020. The world's biggest cryptocurrency was languishing at $18,875 on Sunday night, ending the latest seven-day period at levels not seen since the early days of the bull run. It follows a week of interest rate hikes and gloomy economic data with analysts pointing to a sell-everything climate that has also caused stocks to take a battering. To make matters worse, the US dollar is continuing to gain strength, piling further pressure on the markets. It could be argued that Bitcoin hasn't fared as badly as other assets over the past week, especially considering it's clinging on to $19,000. Bitcoin's 12-month low stands at $17,708, a level that hasn't been seen since June. Ethereum has successfully made the switch from a proof-of-work to a proof-of-stake network, but Vitalik Buterin doesn't want it to end there. The blockchain's co-founder has revealed that he would like to see major altcoins move over to proof-of-stake because of its environmentally friendly credentials. At Masari's mainnet conference, he said, I hope Zcash moves over, and I am hopeful Dogecoin moves to proof of stake soon. Zcash's founder and CEO, Zuko Wilcox, revealed that he thought Ethereum's plans for the merge were exciting, but would never work. Buterin admitted some cryptocurrencies will never switch to proof of stake, but added that he hopes some will achieve a middle ground and embrace some kind of a hybrid model. All hail the mouse. Disney is hiring an experienced corporate attorney who is familiar with NFTs, blockchain, DeFi, and the metaverse. And their name isn't Alex. Pff, what a snub. The vacancy was quietly uploaded to LinkedIn over the weekend and shows that the entertainment giant is getting serious about digital collectibles and virtual worlds. Successful applicants would be tasked with providing full product lifecycle legal advice and support for global NFT products. Candidates are also warned that new projects would be rolled out on an accelerated and aggressive timeline. Disney CEO Bob Chappick is championing a concept called next-gen storytelling, and he believes that the metaverse could play a front-and-center starring role. The company released a small NFT collection last year. Pig butchering scams are a devastating new trend in crypto. Victims are befriended online by strangers and duped into putting their life savings in fake investment schemes. But there's another side to the story. Many of those running these scams are victims themselves. More than 150 Indian people are believed to be trapped in Myanmar after being enticed to move abroad for high-paying roles. They're now trapped without passports and phones and are being ordered to scam people halfway across the world. In some cases, they're being held under armed guard. Although 32 have been rescued so far, dozens more may still need help. Some have only been released after paying a ransom of up to $7,000. Ever wondered why major NFT marketplaces don't let you buy digital art through their iOS apps? Well, it's got a lot to do with the 30% cut that Apple takes for in-app purchases. According to the information, most trading platforms take a 2-3% commission whenever they sell a crypto collectible. But Apple demands 30% of what an NFT sold for, a policy that could drive marketplaces out of business. Executives at top NFT brands told the news outlet that Apple's policies are harming their business models at a time where trading volumes are already battered because of the current bear market. They argue that if Apple's policies were to be softened, it could serve as a huge boost during this time of difficulty. And finally, sometimes in life, it's worth reflecting on the road not traveled. And one crypto enthusiast has claimed that Bitcoin almost had a very different name. Or Weinberger, who specializes in recovering lost wallet passwords, has been delving into domain name registrations back in 2008. On August 18th, Bitcoin.org was registered by an organization organization called Anonymous Speech LLC. But one day earlier, it had also registered Netcoin.org. This seems to indicate that Satoshi Nakamoto was agonizing over whether his flagship cryptocurrency should be called Bitcoin or Netcoin. With the benefit of hindsight, some on crypto Twitter think Bitcoin is a much more attractive name, with some suggesting that Netcoin sounds a bit too nerdy, and obviously the crypto community is far too cool for a dorky name like Netcoin. Speaking of being too radical for this world, let me put on my sunglasses to deliver my engagement spiel. Ah, oh, uh, Bay Sur Tulik, this... Vader... Alright, I'll take him off. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and click on that little bell icon to get buzzed whenever a new Crypto Espresso video goes live. Also, if you've got any feedback, leave a comment, because I read those comments and I will shout out my favorites in a future video. I mean, I think I'm pretty cool, but the coolest cat is just below this video. 
There they is, and it's gonna be Alex. Ask Alex in the description below for more info on today's headlines and crypto in general. Alex is also a great resource for all things Web3 and the Metaverse. Disney, take note. And that does it for today and our extra large episode of Crypto Espresso, which might as well have been drunk out of a bucket, not a teensy tiny little espresso cup. Again, I've been your host, Andrew, and we'll see you all tomorrow.